Good night, Belize, and welcome to the 16th edition of Belize International Film Festival being hosted right here at the Jaguar Building uh, in at the UB campus. I am Dwayne Moody, and I will be your red carpet host for tonight. As you can see, there are already guests who are coming for the opening ceremony. And of course, we had that grand, grand, grand opening with some of the creatives in the industry. Tonight is a celebration of the creative arts in all its grandeur. And of course, we had the UB Steel Band just now performing for us. It was really, really great. Everybody getting down to the music. There is, of course, refreshments being offered at this point in time. It's going to be a celebration tonight. And if you're not here, you're missing out. Uh, tonight, I will, of course, be your host for the red carpet. And we will be talking to some of the people in the industry, those who have been making things work. You know, when you think about the audiovisual industry, you think about films, you think about movies, uh, everything that you can think about. And one of the things that this international festival has done is that it has pulled together some of the brightest, uh, the great works that have been done for the year. Uh, I can tell you guys that for this film festival, there were over 100 plus entries made. And over the course of tonight and the next 10 days, you are going to see 45 films uh, being showcased across the country. Uh, tonight, we're going to have two at least being showcased here after the opening ceremony. But I can tell you that some of these films, those 45 films, come from 32 countries. 32 countries. That's to tell you how the International Film Festival has grown over the years. One of the unique features of this festival is that in the music video category, it is only for Belizean artists. And I think that is super, super great because we celebrate our own, our very own, and that is what the Belize International Film Festival and the people who organize it focus on. Come and join me on the red carpet. Of course, at this time right now, we're going to have a little bit more of the performance from the UB Steel Band here at the Jaguar Auditorium at the University of Belize campus in Belmopan. All right, guys, as you know, the performance by the UB Steel Band 
is amazing right now. It's so culturally rich and it's an exciting time right now for the audiovisual industry in Belize. It is, of course, like I said, the 16th edition of the Belize International Film Festival. Uh, it has been years, over two decades of celebration of those in the industry that, you know, give that extra effort, that extra push into ensuring that, you know what, we are producing some of the best products in film. As we know, Belize is the perfect destination for anything film. You have, of course, the sea, you have land, you have jungle, you have caves, you have everything that you can think about. And it's a, a filmmaker's dream to come and film here in Belize. And it's such an exciting time right now. We are going to be celebrating those persons who made the cut, the 45 films from 32 countries that have made the cut for this entire film festival. Um, like I said, tonight, we will have at least two of those films airing. We have a short that is named Afiemi. That is going to, that's a 16 minute uh, film that will air tonight after the opening ceremonies. And we also have Deep Blue. It's a 90 minute piece. Um, and I will tell you, the producers are here. And so we will get an opportunity to talk to them here. Uh, and let's get these people coming down the um, red carpet. At this point in time, guys, I am going to be joined by the folks from Afiemi. Am I saying it correct, guys? Not really. <laughs> Afiemi. Afiemi. Yeah. Uh, Let's talk about um, Afiene, how it came about, what it is about. Afiene is a film about a Garifuna woman who is struggling between traditional Garifuna spirituality and evangelical Christianity. It came about because we know so many people who have had to make that decision. And when they choose a certain way, there are consequences to that. So what is it that you guys wanted to capture and what anybody who watched take away? Well, we, we wanted to capture the reality of the impact of colonialism and religion on our culture, cultural belief. So, um, Afeni is about the journey of a young lady who um, diverted, deviated from her cultural practices because of religion. But in the end, she had to fall back and then to show that it's okay. Did you guys know that it was going to... Uh, get chosen? Did you feel it that it was that good that it was going to get chosen? We had no idea. We hoped and prayed, definitely, because we want to have the most um, impact for this story. And of course, it's really good to have our festival premiere here at home in, in November. I mean, that's beautiful. It's beautiful. It is, it is. So thank you so much, guys. Uh, again, guys, it's, all, it's just a celebration. Um, and then now we have, uh, of course, I'll get their names right now. Let's talk. Uh, you guys uh, are part of Deep Blue. Let's talk about the roles that you guys play. I am uh, Mitzi Allen, and I am the producer of the film. Yeah. I'm Howard Allen, and I'm the writer-director of the film. Let's talk about Deep Blue, how it came about. What, why you guys decided that, oh, you know what? I'm going to venture into this film. Well, it started with us making documentaries about the environment and learning so much about ecosystems and all of that and I thought it would be a good idea to take the information that you get in a documentary and present it in a feature film making it more entertaining um, but still giving you the information about the, the, the challenges we have between development and conservation you know, it's so interesting because I can tell you guys, I've, uh, I'm a climate change junkie. And so I love doing stories um, on climate change, on the environment. And so this, this film almost like, it's, it's home for me. Like, talk to us about that as producer, jumping on board and knowing that, oh, you know what? There is a space for this in international film. Well, absolutely there's a space for it because the film itself holds up a mirror to society. We're really showcasing what is currently happening now within the environment, especially in small island developing states. 
And as we were told by uh, the festival coordinator, we, Howard tackled every single issue in this film, you know, and he said from, bo from both sides, and it was intentional because we wanted people to come away uh, with uh, an understanding of what's at stake and so that they can make an informed decision about how they see their future on this planet, really. Listen, it's the Belize International Film Festival 2023, the 16th edition, and it was only right that you guys have a place here. And on the opening night at that. We ve feel very privileged. Very privileged. And very excited. Yeah, we're very excited. And uh, the Belizean Festival is a festival that I always um, kind of always wanted to be a part of. And uh, our last film was actually in the Belizean Festival. And so, but we weren't here. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, this is very special to us, yeah. yes. Congratulations thank to you, you both, and thank you. Enjoy the show for tonight, okay? Yeah. <laughs> Enjoy the show for tonight. Thank you. All right, yeah, there you have it, guys. Of course, they are the. Oh, they were, of course, the producer and writer for Deep Blue. That is one of the films of documentary on the environment that won. But who I have beside me today is no stranger, no stranger to Belize. This is, of course, the president of the University of Belize, President. Thank you very much. It is my pleasure. It is a beautiful evening. Sir, it's about celebrating creative, celebrating the arts. And I know that the university has had a push in, you know what, celebrating the audiovisual industry. Of course. And this year we're partnering with the association in hosting this, uh, this evening. And the entire series of movies that will be shown here. And it fits so well with our arts drive at the university. You know, we have a faculty of education and arts. And the arts, our students are out tonight, the faculty are out. So we're very excited. This band, this steel band, UB Steel Band is amazing. Yes, they are. The one and only UB Steel. <laughs> Let, let's talk about one of the expectations, your expectations for tonight and for the rest of the week. My expectation is for other students to see what is happening here. So it could, we could motivate them to let their creative juices flow to uh, create movies or, or documentaries. So it's just to spread the word and let them know that they could do it. You know, there's the, the orange economy, and this is what it's all about, you know? You know, it's so interesting because I'm waiting for the minister who is supposed to arrive, the Minister of Tourism, um, Anthony Mahler, because he has been a, a driving push, he has had this driving push about the orange economy, and it's something that UB does? Oh, for sure, for sure. And uh, we will continue to do it. It'll just get bigger. Thank you so much for your support, sir. Thank, Thank you for making the work away. All right, sir. That, all right, guys. That was, of course, the president of uh, the University of Belize. At this point in time, who I'm inviting here on the red carpet is no other than, of course, area representative for Bel Mopan, the Honorable Oscar Mira. Mr. welcome, welcome. Talk to us. The Belize International Film Festival here in the capital city. I mean, it's exciting, you know. Um, people say they're upon boring, but they're only boring because they don't know what's happening. You know, they could come out here tonight and just enjoy what is being presented here today. You know, it is only the first night, it's the opening, but up until November 12th, there will be films showcased right here at the University of Belize. So people can come out and check out the great work of people in the audiovisual industry. Let's talk about that. Should they come out? Should they come out this year? Of course, there's a lot of potential. Um, and I think that um, you heard um, the government and the prime minister putting a lot of emphasis on the orange economy. This is what it's all about. You know, um, this government is investing and they are going to ensure that our orange economy is vibrant, that it makes money, you know, for the country of Belize. You know, I think a lot of people don't understand the value of the orange economy. Outside of academics, people want the creatives, they want the creative. That is what makes us authentically Belizean because we have the cultures, we have all of that, that, that nobody can touch Belize. No, exactly. And I think it's a, it's a good way to showcase the talent that's here. It's a good way to showcase the country and come on out here to the University of Belize. This is our university, you know. And I am so proud that um, the University of Belize is hosting this here in Balwapan. Um, come out, there will be so many. Um, it's something that you can come and enjoy as a family as well. So come out here, 
and enjoy what is being um, set up here at the University of Belize. I'm glad the university take up this thing here. It is your university. Well said. Thank you so much, Minister. All right, guys, there you had it. That was, of course, Oscar Mira. He is the Minister of State in the Ministry of National Defense. And, uh, and of course, uh, just now, as you heard from him, we have to support the orange economy. It's a push that the government has been doing. Uh, and so the next person, yeah, and right this side. Of yes. course, let's talk about, let's get your name and where you're, what you're representing. Yeah, my name is Javan Sankar, and um, I have an animated film. We do animation. Listen, I, I, we, we, let's talk about this for a little while. Animation is a creative way to get people to, to appreciate different storylines and all of that. It's, it's outside of the traditional way how you showcase a film. Yeah. Let's talk about how getting to this point where, because I know it takes a lot of time That's to put right. those things together. Yeah. Well, I'm actually a teacher as well. And one of my um, expertise right now is training young people um, in teaching them animation. Um, at the high school here in Belize, in Sokot, um, I've been young Nazarene High School. So um, we work on this um, short film, a very short animation, um, and the students loved it. And so we have been training them, trying to create a culture that we can actually one day have an animation industry here in Belize. Let's talk about what your animation is talking about, the name of what it's talking about. Well, the, the, the one that we did is Billy the Caribbean Boy. Um, the directors are um, some guys from out in Trinidad, and we partner up to create this story about this uh, Caribbean boy that was teaching us how to do the right thing. So that was the whole idea behind the animation. How did you tap into animation as something outside of the teaching? That yeah, well, I have, I have always been a creative, you know, I, 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 I love music and so forth, so I saw the opportunity to get into computer animation, took a course, and here I am today. Well, congratulations, of course, and we're looking forward to seeing your animated film. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. <laughs> I, I swear, <laughs> it's been really, really good. Uh, 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 no, you can't do me that. You can't do me that. <laughs> Listen, guys. It's a celebration of, and when I say creatives, it's music, it's art, it's, I, I, it, it's such an amazing industry, this orange economy, and tonight we're seeing all facets of this. Yes, well, actually I'm here to support Feline because her short, a painting, will be playing tonight, so I had to come as, um, to support her. And the names that are on the roster, the producers, the singers, the actors, they are, they're people I know that I've worked with in dance and in the fashion industry thing that I'm doing as well. So I know it ties in to I everything know, that we're seeing happening. And so let's talk about that. Um, what is, outside of a penny, is there any particular film that you're looking forward to? Well, um, I was watching the, um, the Miss Ziden and a few of the producers on, on the morning show this morning and they said that they're, they're going to put a, um, a romantic comedy so I would love to see that it's shot in the Caribbean. I support every, anything that's Belizean and Caribbean. I think we need to support each other in the arts and um, I see a lot of people here in the arts who are here to support which is beautiful. Thank you so much Denise. All right, there you have it, guys. Uh, uh, this next person that is coming to, uh, that's on our runway, that, uh, our red carpet, guys, uh, this is Melissa Castellano Setpa. She is no stranger to the creative industry. I'm telling you, just recently she put off this John John's Blue, uh, an entire play. She's a producer, a playwright, uh, what else, a director, uh, a writer, a teacher, like everything in a one. But of course, it's your night. She's the host for tonight's opening ceremony. And so she's wearing a different hat tonight. But yes. talk to us about just coming out and being a part of this event. This is a very exciting event. Um, I think when, when looking at what 
kind of happened this entire week and talking to Ms. Suzette, knowing that this is a great avenue to illustrate film and advocate for social changes. And you know how I am a fan of social changes. So this is great. Um, I believe in the work that Suzette is doing. This is the orange economy all in one. And I'm just so thrilled that she invited us and the entire cast of John John's Blue. So we are so grateful to be here and to be a part of this, this 16 years of exciting film industry. It is an industry that needs to grow. It is an industry that our government needs to advocate for. And so hopefully with everybody who's here, we can make a voice, right? The right? thing is, is that you've been able to get talent to, to work with some of our talented uh, people in uh, this country and uh, musicians and actors and all of that. Uh, let's talk about what that experience has been like for you. Oh, it is amazing um, when we're looking at people like Dwayne Moody or Audrey Matura, Stephanie, or Indra Craig, you know, we are looking at people who are the voices in Belize. They're influencers, but they can be influencers in the right way. And I think when we give them that opportunity, open that avenue, we have so many things that we can make happen in Belize. We got talent. So we are the part film next? Of course, Suzette, watch out for us. Dwayne is going to be starring. Thank you so much, Melissa. All right. <laughs> there you have it. That was Melissa. It's part. Uh, you know, it was great. A member of the thing. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, and then our next guest. Hi. Hi. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the 16th edition of the Belize International Film Festival. Let's introduce yourselves, guys. Uh, I'm Deborah Fairweather. And My name is Steve from Craig. And you guys are representing? We decorated. We were the decorators. Thank you so much. It's really an amazing celebration of film in Belize, an industry that is growing so much. Uh, let's talk about that, uh, 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 being a part of this. Yes, I've always supported, since like 2018, I started supporting the Belize Film Festival by bringing actors and directors from the States to the festival. And I've continued working with Suzette and on different projects here in Belize in costumes. And I really enjoy it. I enjoy taking the knowledge that I've gained from traveling and working abroad in the film industry and, and, and applying it here. Is there any particular film that you're looking forward to seeing over the next 12 years? Well, I am fresh to this, you know. I live in Europe. The last time I was in Cannes for the Cannes Film Festival, so it's a pleasure to be here in Belize, you know. Long time I have not been in my country, 17 years, so it's a privilege to be here. Any particular film you're looking for? Deep Blue, I'm really excited about that. And the, and the young lady that did the Garofano film, that is amazing. I'm very impressed by her work and what she's done. I thought it was amazing that she did that. Yeah, so, very, very impressed. Thank you guys so much. All right, thank you guys so much. All right, guys, as you can hear, uh, the Belize International Film Festival is a celebration of so many things, um, of uh, culture, of the environment, uh, it's the creative arts in full, 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 full fledged. And of course, the woman of the hour. Hi, Suzette. <laughs> Hi, Suzette. I, I, guys, if you don't know, this is Suzette Zayden. She is founder, she did this whole thing. She was the one that came up with this vision for the industry. And tonight, two decades later, this is the 16th edition of the film festival. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Well, I'm, thank you. <laughs> thank you. I'm excited. It's, uh, that it's still going. I'm, I'm really excited that four years, it's four years since we had the last in-person one. Um, the pandemic hit us and, and we're coming back and it seems like everybody missed it. We're seeing people from di different stakeholders in the, this industry here to celebrate what's going on. We have actors, we have producers, writers, all of that. Belize is a perfect location for film making. We agree. And surprisingly, Belmopan could be an interesting, uh, like, you know, like that middle, you know, it's in the middle of the country, and so you could go different directions. We just have to convince tourism that they need to build more hotels here, because we're seeing a lot of productions uh, going down the Hummingbird Highway, and movies, unlike, um, unlike vacation tourists are not looking for boutique hotels 
They want to house 80, crews of 80 people, and they need to get them in and out. So it's it's a way to develop other areas that you would not have thought you would not have thought possible. So Balmapan might be the capital, but it could almost be the capital of Phil. Man, it has grown so much over the years. It's what 32 different countries participating in the you know that's actually average for us. It might sound like a lot. There are a lot of people in a lot of different countries that are um, looking at the festival, that are thinking, uh, you know what? Maybe this is a festival that matches my film because sometimes if you make a film, you have to be aware of the type of film that you're making and who might potentially be your audience. So you don't go sending it to every single one unless you want to get a lot of rejections. So you try and marry the film that you've made to, to where it would be accepted. And so we've, we've been, um, we, we have this reputation of being as films with a purpose or a message. And so we get a lot of um, strong films. And sometimes we say, we're like, you know what, we really need some comedy in here. <laughs> but but we, can get, we can have strong messages with comedy too, right? Comedy, we're seeing environment we're seeing culture we're seeing we're seeing we're, we have a film from nigeria we have we have a really great caribbean fairy tale called opal it's absolutely fantastic i looked at that and i was like mothers but we know that, but the filmmaker is a friend of ours so we know that we can get him here to believe and to connect with the animators here one last question before we end the red carpet uh, where to next Bigger and better. Where, where to next for Belize International? Right now, we're focusing on the storytelling. I think we've reached a point where we've uh, convinced the people that there is a film industry in Belize. Even if they don't know it, we've made enough noise that they know we're here. But now it's time to put a, a closer look at the stories. We wanna. That's why we've uh, connected with UB. We want to have those classes. We want to train the screenwriters. We want to start crafting really good Belizean stories. And that's that's the aim. That's the direction we're going now. Thank you so much, Suzette. There you have it, guys. That was Suzette Zayden, the founder of the um, audiovisual industry in Belize. And of course, guys, uh, we're done. This is it for the um, for the red carpet. We are, oh, oh, okay. So, hi, how are you? Welcome, welcome. Elizabeth from the European Union. Hi, Elizabeth. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Uh, Belize International Film Festival. Uh, it's, yeah. it's going to be an amazing opportunity to showcase Belizean talent and, I of agree. course, talent from outside. Absolutely. Yeah, we're very excited. So, for the European Union, it's the first time partnering with the festival. Uh, so, we're really excited and thank the university and the festival for inviting us. Um, we, I mean, culture is so important supporting culture and the film industry and definitely this is a great opportunity we've contributed a number of films uh, there will be three free uh, European movie nights tomorrow and next Tuesday here at UB and on the 11th in San Ignacio so we're really here to show our support for the film industry in Belize and the message is show up come support film right it's amazing because it's amazing because there's all these free um, opportunities to view these films. That otherwise, you know. yeah, exactly, and especially students, it's completely free. They just show their ID, and the themes of the movies are really important because you know things like climate action, human rights, domestic violence, migration. So I think it's it's really an opportunity for the audience to get inspired to maybe you know challenge the thinking, uh, get new ideas. It's a wide cross-section. It's not yeah. only one thing. 45 uh, and films, I think. And, I think, and from 32 different countries. <laughs> right. And there's even animation that is yeah. in it. And music videos. Yeah, 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 exactly. So we are participating with the movies from seven countries, seven of the 27 members of the European Union. So again, very exciting and looking forward to meeting the public as well and really excited about the opportunity. Thank, Thank you so much for the support. <laughs> Thank you. All Thank right. you for having us. Thank you. <laughs> and there, guys, uh, last but not least, we have uh, Father Jeremy um, that is here. Uh, he's from, of course, the parish, the Catholic parish. Let's talk about it, the Jesuit, right? Right. Uh, yeah, let's talk about, sir, um, supporting this 
orange economy and what we're seeing here too. Awesome. Well, even before I do that, I just want to say, Dwayne, I'm a big fan of yours. <laughs> I saw you in John John's Blue at the Bliss <laughs> last month, and it was amazing. That, that, that was uh, my debut. That was my debut. <laughs> And you were one of the best actors in the whole thing. So I, I can't wait to see your next performance. No, don't listen to him. He's lying. <laughs> no, but yes, sir. It was a great experience, of course, to, to be on stage. I think um, one of the things is that oh, tonight is a celebration of the creatives. Yeah. Uh, and the fact that, you know what? Belize has talent. I, I know how um, cliche it might seem, but we have yes. talent. Oh, Belize has so much talent. And, you know, art is important. Art is extremely important. That was one thing after that play uh, at the Bliss that we did. We were thinking about how, you know, in order to process, like, social problems and social justice issues, you need art to do that. And we need a lot more of it in Belize. So it's great to be celebrating these creative forces tonight. Is there any, have you been able to look at the lineup? And is there any particular film that you want to see? Oh, I'm excited about all of them. Um, there's one about uh, 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 a sister who is working in, now I forget, somewhere in Central or South America, Honduras, um, who worked with children and worked with ecology. So it's kind of a faith perspective film, but it's about what she's doing to help these young people and help our common home, um, the planet Earth. So there's a lot of uh, films I'm looking forward to. Well, enjoy tonight, Thanks, Thank Thanks. you so much. All right, awesome. All right, uh, uh, guys, uh, uh, of course, we have the, the whole set, the crew from uh, John John's Blue um, that are here with us. Um, they, we all, myself included, we all were part of uh, John John's Blue. This was a play that was recently um, done uh, at the Bliss Center for the Performing Arts for two nights in November. We really wanted to share a lot of the social issues that were happening in Belize uh, and, and give a platform. And we used our voices, collective voices, to, of course, spread that I am here with no stranger, Audrey Matura. And, uh, Audrey, let's talk about coming out as supporting this industry. I think it's important because Belizeans are very talented, very artistic. I think the arts need to be revived. In my younger years, I remember going to live shows and so so I'm really happy to see this, and I like that they're using the technology because this is a film festival, and I think if we keep on doing this, it will encourage more Belizeans to be involved. But let me hand over to the young people, right? Avant, Avant here. Yeah, guys, this is Avant. Of course, he was, Avant Kelly was one of the main characters in John John Blue. Avant, let's talk about your experience in theater and how that ties into what we're celebrating here. Okay, so uh, my experience in theater, I enjoy doing it because it, it gives a feeling of culture. And this is what the Belize International Film Festival is about. Culture. Let's take, for example, Afini. We're coming to see her short movie. And I want to experience something that is from Belize, so that it's just my thing. Uh, while it was your, of course, inaugural uh, taste of um, the creative industry in that sense, what is it that you want to do you see yourself becoming maybe an actor, uh, doing more? Maybe we take Jan Jan's Blue to the theaters and we can see Avon live in action. Uh, all right, thank you so much. Guys, uh, uh, we have uh, one more uh, before, because we have to cut. The opening ceremony has to happen. Welcome, welcome, welcome. welcome. Thank you, thank you. Guys, let's get your names. And, and My name is again. Carl Shackleton. Emma Gideon. Guys, let's talk about coming out and being a part of this Belize International Film Festival. Well, I'm very honored to be here to, uh, this evening. First of all, I'd like to thank uh, Karen Vernon for inviting us. I'm all the way from Atlanta, and um, I've been here 12 times this year. Nice. And this, this year alone? This year alone. I'd like to thank um, Minister Mahler for doing such a great job in you know, e engaging so many different aspects of the diaspora to come here to Belize and partake in the culture. And uh, this is an amazing event. I'm a filmmaker out of Atlanta. Uh, so opportunities for, 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 for people, there are some of the stakeholders there. There are some actors and actresses here. Maybe they might be pulled out. <laughs> yes, I would love to. Uh, my intention is to actually do a few movies here in Belize. So uh, if anybody is interested. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, how can people get in contact? When are we going to start the shoot? We don't need to know. Like, 
Well, um, I'm open. Uh, the name of my company is called Ubuntu uh, Enterprises. We have Ubuntu Films, and uh, we've done quite a few music videos here already, and we love the culture here. We love the people here, and we intend to... You know, somebody said Belize is the ideal, or, or the dream of any filmmaker, because we're so close to the ocean, to jungle, caves, everything. Man, man. You, you have everything here. You have the mountains, you have the ocean, you have the inner city, and you have the beautiful people. So, one thing I noticed, there are so many diverse talents in Belize. The culture is immense. There are so many stories that has to be told here. And I, I look forward to partaking. I, I think we look forward to seeing you back in Belize very soon uh, 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 and doing some work here. Well, I am here to stay. Not to, so. All right, I'll take that. Thank you so much, Thank Mr. You. God. Thank you, Mr. God. All right, guys, there you have it. The red carpet. Oh, what, yeah, we have. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is so, so amazing, guys. One of the things that we had is really um, the, the folks from Sankas that are here providing treats for everybody. No. She, uh, I, I, like, when they have their own personal makeup artist, guys, I just know, this is, of course, no stranger uh, to us, Aisha uh, Trap. Aisha, let's talk about being here, providing this service to people uh, like no other. Hi, Lowen, yes. Um, we usually sponsor the Belize International Film Fest every year. But this year we decided to take on a different strategy and uh, we're introducing our Aperol, which is a new drink under the Santiago Castillo Limited brand. And of course we have to pair it along with our Reality Prosecco. And it's the Aperol Spritz we are promoting. And we have wonderful products from Sancas, our Grand Nuts, our cheeses, and we have uh, our little charcuterie cups that we are giving as complimentary tonight. Wow, like, let's talk about that and, and being a part of the, partnering with the film festival every single year, it, it, it is, a, you know, a big support to the orange economy, which is very vital to, to our country. Of course, you know that, you know, Sankas always supports, you know, when it comes to our community. Um, the film festival has grown each year, and of course, this year is none other, so... Big. It's, it's big, big this big. year, so of course we are a part of it, and we are really, really proud to be a part of it this year, showcasing our new uh, drink, our apparel. I just have to give you a chance, like we can get this as any uh, anywhere, in, or only at San Yes, or yes you can get it in our su in all the supermarkets, and um, we are just showcasing, you know, how people can uh, mix it and. You know the shark cutter cups as well, how you can pair that together. Yeah, exactly. Everything in there is from Sankas. Thank you so much, Aisha. Uh, there you have it, guys. Uh, the Belize International Film Festival uh, 2023. Uh, it is amazing, amazing, amazing. Uh, this was the red carpet. The opening ceremony will be happening momentarily. I'm doing Moody, and thank you for joining us. But of course, stay tuned for the opening ceremony right after this short commercial break. Bye. 
رامین امروز داره میره راه نمایی چه زود گذشت چش به هم بزنه بعد عروس بیه We've been granted asylum Great, great Congratulations man آه وارا دونی تو میخوای بری آفتنی یا نه اگه اعتراض داریم میتونیم بریم دادگاه درخواست تجدید نظر بدیم خب پس یعنی این فرصت دیگه داریم دیگه برسه؟ آره تو چی شد؟ زحبت کردن با یه دختر چطور باید شروع کنم؟ لازم نیست چیزی بگیم فقط تو چشماش نگاه میکنی بهش لبخند میزن من هم میخوام تو دیگه داری Gracie. What are you talking about? How did Gracie die? She was insane. She was always talking about ghosts. I wish she was dead. Janet. Anything else you want to tell me? No. <laughs> I need angels. I need angels. I can't let her go back to them. My wings can't fly. Yeah, okay. Give me some faith. It's a weakness. can't fight it comes in the night it won't leave me alone like a dark shadow commitment from the game if he loses he will give me his tendulka trophy if he wins i will not bully him till the end of the semester been fascinated by the ocean but I have this one little problem mm -hmm. can't swim why these people always want to build so close to the beach if a hurricane comes this whole project this hotel will be flattened this is my land and I am free to do with it whatever I want to you're nothing but a common thief I don't need anybody coming here with a silver spoon stuck in the mouth, telling us how to run our business. 
Our solemn promise is to redesign and rebuild this coastline better than Mother Nature ever could. I got a fisherman here. He's got decompression sickness. Yeah, he needs attention immediately. D, 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 When did paradise become merchandise? Actuales. Lo que encontramos aquí es la segunda selva más grande del continente, la que también le han llamado selva maya. ¿no? Un proyecto como este del tren maya nos acarrearía mucha gente y esas gentes vendrían como turistas a, a gastar sus centavos acá, pero pues todo, todo progreso trae, trae también sus consecuencias. Siempre todo nos lleva a lo mismo, ¿verdad? A trabajar con las grandes empresas. Si hay mucho turismo, pues hay trabajo. No hay otra cosa. <risa> sí, la verdad. Porque hasta ahorita, como les digo, no, no hay información del tren mayo. Nada más sabemos qué va a pasar. Pero no sabemos cuánto va a afectar, hasta dónde va a afectar acá. Los que vienen a hablarnos de desarrollo seguro tienen... En, en, en su cabeza todo un contexto, todo un diseño eh, de lo que quieren decir con este concepto del desarrollo. Somos como las plantas, los animales, somos lo mismo, nos hemos ido adaptando. ¿Para qué? Para no desaparecer. Coterradas que nos comen la milpa. Good evening. Tonight we come together for this exciting occasion to celebrate the world of cinema and audiovisual presentations. This event is where local and international filmmakers gather to showcase an outstanding lineup of independent films from all over the world, giving you a unique peek into the diverse cultures and social scenes of nations worldwide. Honorable Anthony Mahler, Minister of Tourism and Diaspora Relations. Honorable Oscar Mira, Area Representative of the City of Belmopan. Senator Isabel Bennett Moody. Madam Mayor Sharon Palacio. Miss Elizabeth Mary Lanzi Mazzucchini, the Cultural Diplomacy Focal Point for the European Union Delegation of Belize. Father Jeremy Zippel from the Society of Jesus. Filmmakers, producers, directors, actors, invited guests. On behalf of the organizing committee of the Belize International Film Festival, we are thrilled to welcome you to the 16th annual International Film Festival. Let us begin our official opening ceremonies by first recognizing our country's anthem, followed by the invocation. 
I invite you to stand for the playing of the Belizean National Anthem and remain standing for the invocation by Father Jeremy Sipple. Let us pray. Almighty God, creator, creative one, God of manifold graces, we rejoice that we human beings are made in your image and instilled with your creative energy and power. We thank you for all of the artists producers, directors, actors, technicians represented in this Belize Film Festival who steward your gifts through visual expression for the sake of human inquiry and the explore exploration of divine beauty. Uphold filmmakers and all whose livelihoods are intertwined with this call to create. Give purpose and meaning to these wonder workers. Bless these, the stewards of your creative gifts, and keep them in your grace always. Send your blessings upon this festival and all gathered here. May it be time of exploration of what it means to be a human being and to rejoice in all the gifts of this created world. All this we pray in gratitude for your many gifts poured out among your people. Amen. Please be seated. Thank you, Father Jeremy. So tonight is a night of creativity. And Father Jeremy Zippel, again, thank you so much for that invocation. A filmmaker himself, so we're honored to have you here in our, in our presence. When I came in, I was wonderfully welcomed by amazing students, educators, um, and the president himself. I feel at home. I am an alum. 
and so I do feel at home. But here to tell you a little bit more about what the university stands for and to welcome you, officially welcome you tonight, I invite the president, Dr. Vincent Palacio, to come and give that welcome remark. Thank you very much, Melissa, our Director of Ceremonies, for this evening. What an evening. My, my first time on a red carpet. <laughs> and it feels good. I feel like a celebrity, <laughs> at least for an evening. Thank you for recognizing are acknowledging the protocol, but I'd like to extend welcome to Honorable Anthony Mala, Minister of Tourism and Diaspora Relations, Honorable Oscar Mira, National Defense Minister of State, Ms. Suzette Zaiden, founder of the Belize International Film Festival, filmmakers, aficionados, volunteers, students, and guests. Welcome, welcome to the National University. I thank you for being here with us today to be a part of this important event. We are very pleased to be able to facilitate the 16th edition of the festival. I am especially pleased to have it here at our Belmopan campus, a campus of which I am very proud of. I wish it was daytime so you could see all the trees and all the nice areas that we have here on our Belmopan campus. For those of you who are here for the first time, welcome to the University of Belize. Creative cultural and artistic activities are vital for our sense of well-being. During the recent pandemic, art and music was useful in allowing us to survive the isolation and confinement. Singers, dancers, and musicians brought comfort to people through the internet or from the radios and television. We cannot then downplay the importance of the creative industry, the orange economy. We're very proud and excited to champion this orange economy. In February of next year, the University of Belize will host the Kobeck Winter Conference and one of the major themes that we will discuss at that conference, Minister, is the orange economy. Art is deemed to be an expression of the human spirit because artists best express the human condition. For this reason, the cultural and creative industry is integral not only to the economy, but also to the human experience. I say all this to underscore that films allows for, for our young people to learn about diverse cultures, economic structures, and political implications, enhancing their understanding of the world around them. Films weigh a significant influence on the minds of today's youth. They entertain, they inspire, and promote social awareness and cultural understanding. Now this is what universities are about. We create the platform for our students and by extension, 
the community to be exposed to these experiences. And so, film festivals, importantly, offer a platform for our young Belizean filmmakers to present their creative ideas, their singular stories and storytelling, their talent and skill in their making, and not least, their passion to communicate how they feel and think about the world they live in. So to all of you today, thank you for coming out this evening. Indulge yourselves in the worlds that are going to be open to you. Do have a great time here with us at the UB Belmapan campus as we kick off this carefully planned event. Welcome again. Thank you, President Palacio. He mentioned the orange economy, the buzzword. The orange economy is the industry to look out for. And I believe in the latest um, investment forum, it was the buzzword too. The President of Colombia said, the orange economy, film, it's a market. And so I'm so glad that you are all here supporting that idea. Thank you, Dr. Palacio, for being such a great host and inviting us into your home for us to lead this economy. Our home. Our home. Thank you. The National University, ladies and gentlemen. I spoke with Ms. Suzette earlier this year, and she said, would you like to just be the host? I said, sure. I love films. I love watching films. And I'm thinking I've been to several of the international film festivals. And you're always bringing unique films for students, for us lovers of the film. And so I said, why not? And I spoke to her last week. Oh, girl, almost done. I spoke to her three days ago. Oh, I can't wait till it's done. But we know that the love that she places in this project is one of a labor of love. And here to tell you about her labor of love and to tell you what this festival is all about and why we need to continue supporting after 16 years, I welcome the one and only Ms. Suzette Seiden. Good evening, everyone. Protocol having been established, I proceed. Um, first of all, I'm very excited to be standing here in front of you all tonight. Um, I'm very excited to see the interest that has continued in the festival, even as we've taken a four, we took a four year hiatus, um, thanks to the pandemic. <laughs> Our last festival was in 2019. And so it was with some trepidation that we approached the idea of doing this first in-person festival. Um, but at the same time, it's something that we knew had to be done. And so there's a group of us, a core group of us, who are the organizing committee behind the festival. It's basically a group of volunteers, hardcore filmmakers, I'm gonna call us, um, who understand that this is our livelihood, this is our business, and this is why the festival must continue because if film in Belize is going to be kept alive, if you're not gonna make the films, we're gonna at least show the films <laughs> until we make them <laughs> and continue to make them. And so, um, and so that makes me excited that we did do it, that we're actually here tonight and I'm looking at so many different faces. I'm looking at a diverse group of people. I see different ages, I see different ethnicities, I see different cultures, I see lots of people wearing cultural apparel. I think that's so fantastic. And, um, and I'm gonna say that I'm sure it's reflective of one of our opening films tonight though. And I'd just like to take a minute to acknowledge that in the room we do have the filmmakers of both of the films that are opening tonight. Could um, Feline Caetano stand up a minute? Feline is... Um, <laughs> the director and writer of our short film. Uh, 
indigenous Garifuna film, and you'll get to see it tonight, and we have Feline with us in case you'd like to ask her some questions. I'd also like to acknowledge the presence of Howard and Mitzi Allen, who are joining us from Antigua. <laughs> they are the producers and director of the feature film that you're about to see called Deep Blue. And their film is what has led us, down, one of the films that has led us down the theme of sustainable development that we will be discussing later on Joe, at the festival. Thank you for joining us here. I know there are many others in the audience, or at least a few. I'm just gonna take a chance and take this opportunity. Can you stand up if you have a film in the festival and you're in here? I know I've seen at least one. <laughs> Come on, Javan, stand up. <laughs> Javan leads an animation program at his high school in Sakot. Uh, your school is in huh? Alvin Young Nazarene High School, and I should remember that because that's the only high school in the country that is doing an animation program, and we would like to see that um, grow. So we communicate often <laughs> on how we can move this forward. And so his students, his students are Perhaps his program is one of the reasons we also have a new category this year that's called student films, and we've opened it up to um, student films from established film schools within the region, within the Caribbean region and within the Central American region. And um, that allows us to see what sort of work is coming out of educational institutions, like the one we want to begin at um, University of Belize, right, Doc? <laughs> So um, it's, it's a start for, other, for the students here to see what other students are also doing. Um, so yeah, this festival is, has 45 films from 32 different countries. I have a bunch of people who like to ask for statistics, so I'm forced to remember this each time. But we did have at least 153 entries, I believe it was, um, from maybe 35 countries, so we hit almost every country when we did the 32. Um, the, we do have followings in, in around the world. We have quite a few that apply from the Philippines. They would apply from Poland. They'll apply from uh, Trinidad, some from Jamaica. We do a, a few from Central America, not as much as we want to, but we're growing that. We're growing those relationships and we're seeing what's out there. So anyway, we're here, and we're here because we know that there's a lot of work to be done. There's still a lot more work to be done for this industry to become, um, I want to say, mainstream. You know, like when you go to school, you can find lots of classes for business schools, uh, even medical schools. I understand there's a medical school about to be opened here um, on, on the campus. We'd like to see the film school being open right behind it, so we're here to lobby for that. Um, and we will continue to work at this festival, the team that's with me. Um, I know some of you, again, let me just quickly acknowledge my team, Javier and everybody else who's in this room. Can you just stand up and wave so people know who the committee is? There's one, there's Yima from, there's Deborah. Where you from? Stand up guys, stand up, let them see who's working hard. I have a few outside who are still working. <laughs> David, and so, um, I feel blessed to be working with these individuals because they're all dynamic filmmakers and independent producers in their own right. Our, um, our festival design was created by Nocturnal Studios. Uh, in Awe, in Awe Productions animated it for us. Um, Rick from Channel 5 created the trailer for us. Uh, Channel 5 works on broadcast, give, gives us this wonderful, um, service of, of broadcasting this program for you at no charge. Um, and then we have our logistics managers outside handling uh, a lot of the production support for the festival, making sure things get where they're supposed to be. They're even doing the bar right now, <laughs> making sure that you guys are all happy in here. Um, so it's a team that's built on the, on the framework of what a film, uh, what a film production crew looks like. That's how we work. There's a production team, there's a camera team, there's the, the um, 
decorating team, <laughs> the costume, de our costume designer did the decorations. Um, so we, we, we built together a relationship and we would love to embrace more people into this. We encourage volunteers, we encourage interns and at UB we found a lot of those. We found a lot of um, volunteers and interns and we were so happy to see so many of them involved. You'll probably see them around, they're the ones wearing the t-shirts. And I think that we've been, we've gone a step closer in making them understand uh, how, how interesting and how much work, but fun it is to pull something like this together. Um, and so, basically what the festival, quickly, what the festival is, it's gonna be 10 days, starts tonight. Um, tonight, Friday, November 3rd, and you're seeing these two films. Tomorrow is, a, I mean, this weekend is very intensive. It starts at 10 a.m. with a film called Unknown Blue and followed by a workshop on sustainable development where we have different uh, versions, different ideas, talk about how can you strike a balance between conservation and development. Um, it was a theme that emerged quite a few of our films. In fact, there's another one that's, that could interest some of you that's called um, The Train and the Peninsula and it looks at the Yucatan, the train that's just been built in, in Yucatan. And, and the impact it had on that, on that region. Um, so we'll go from 10 a.m. until about 10 p.m. Saturday, as well as Sunday here. And then we take a break, and the libraries take over on Monday and Friday, where they'll be screening films in Belmopan at the National Heritage Library on Monday, and they'll be screening films at the San Ignacio Public Library on Friday. In between, Belmopan has three more chances to watch films. They can come out and see films Tuesday night, Wednesday night, and Thursday night here at the Jaguar Auditorium from 6 to 8. After Thursday, we head over, we have a, and then we have one more panel on Wednesday, the Indigenous panel, which uh, promises to be extremely interesting with panelists from all over the world uh, that will look at, we have Feline, who will be representing the Garifuna Indigenous uh, uh, representation in film. It's a panel on Indigenous representation in film. We have. Uh, some, a, a Cree woman from Canada who has a film in the festival. She'll be joining us virtually. We have a professor from uh, University of California, Santa Barbara, who was one of the um, persons tapped to create the Maya world in Wakanda forever. So it'd be interesting to hear what, what, how he developed that idea for them. Um, and another gentleman from the African diaspora who will be joining us. So it'll be quite interesting to hear about all these different how they feel about what's happening with their representations in film, if it's, if it's honest or not, or if it's us really putting our, our representations out or it's another perspective, someone else's perspective of what indigenous people should look like or behave like. So it's gonna be an interesting discussion as well. That's Wednesday at two o'clock right here at UB as well. Um, and so then we move to Cayo on Friday where we'll be screening two films Friday night at the um, Soul, the Belize Soul Project space, and then Saturday all day at the Kaya Welcome Center from 10 a.m. to 10 p.m. And then it's finished. <laughs> we close off on Sunday. So it sounds like it's long, but it's not that long. So please don't uh, sleep up or else and miss out because these are wonderful films that we only have the right to show about one, once or twice. They don't, we don't hold on to them forever. So take advantage. Um, and again, let me just thank you for coming out. I appreciate you very much. And welcome to the festival. Thank you, Suzette. I think many times when Suzette speaks, we don't understand how much work she does and we underestimate the work that this one woman does. So please, let us give her another round of applause. It has, it has to be a big dream for you to continue doing this after 16 years. So Suzette, again, I congratulate you. Woman of power. And so, yes, woman of power, yes. So when Suzette plans this, she needs to find partners. She needs to go out there and ask and beg and humble yourself. And it's not an easy task, I know. So tonight we are very lucky 
to have one of the partners here, our partners of the festival. We're now inviting Miss Elizabeth Mary Lanzi Mazzacchini, who is the cultural diplomacy focal point for the European Union delegation to Belize, to tell us more about their partnership. So with protocols having been established, so I wish to say, dear friends, it's really great to be here. I think we're here sharing a common passion for film. So that's why I feel confident in saying, dear friends, tonight. So that while the festival reached its 16th edition, for us as European Union, it's actually the first time partnering. And personally, as a lover of cinema, originally from Italy, a country that has had in its time a very booming film industry, I'm very, very excited to be here tonight. And I really want to thank both the University of Belize and the festival itself for considering us and approaching us to partner in the festival. So film is an expression of culture, of culture and art. And culture and art are essential pillars of societies, of any society, anywhere in the world. And this is one main reason why as European Union we support many festivals across the world because we believe that culture and creative industries are important to ensure continuous development in our societies and they are at the heart also of the creative economy. Within our union of 27 countries that form the European Union, we have also experienced how cinema, is so powerful and so essential in creating bridges of understanding across different countries and people with different outlooks and different cultures, such as uh, the union that I come from, so where we are so different, 24 different languages, completely different ways of thinking, but still united in this diversity. And cinema has been one, one way, actually, to bring uh, our people together and one way that we like to share with the rest of the world. Um, I believe that when watching a film, we, we, as human beings, we're all moved by something, our emotions, our passion, what we feel inside of us. That's the, the reality of us being human, no matter where we are fro from in the world. So there's a lot of evidence in research on the positive impacts of culture on our personal well-being, um, on, on our health, also on the economy, on democracy, on innovation. So there's, there's just so much added value in culture and in film. Film being um, uh, a form of art, what we see in Belize, and personally I've been here only for a year and a half, I arrived in April 2022, so I'm still quite junior to the territory, but I see that there is this um, developing uh, industry with uh, both emerging and established film directors and professionals who are working really hard to take the industry to the next level and also place Belize on the international map of film. Uh, the work of these filmmakers is, is really important also to create a shared sense of identity, of culture, and of values. And I think uh, exemplary of this is Feline Caetano's film that we will be seeing tonight. Um, there are also stories that are really emblematic and must be told through film. And one of the stories I have in mind now is the so story of Nora Param, as we have entered now the month of November. It's a month where we reflect on the tragedy and the cancer of society, which is domestic violence and sexual and gender-based violence. And I'm aware that there is a film documentary project that is currently under preparation by Colorblind here in Belize, and I know Audrey is in the audience and they're seeking support. So Nora's story is just one story that has to be told. There are many other stories. Um, the films in the festival, I think, are um, really amazing. They range from all sorts of topics, from climate action to migration to human trafficking to women's rights to corruption to indigenous people's rights and many more. And these themes also uh, speak of global challenges that are shared in, in our contemporary world. 
and some of them speak to some of the priorities of the partnership of the European Union with Belize and the friendship with Belize that no, now goes back 30 years, over th three decades. So I'm really sure that you will find some inspiring films in the program. Maybe some are going to challenge your perspective. I'm ready to challenge mine. And I think some of them may even move us to tears. Some of us may push us to rethink even about some aspects of our life. This is the power of film, so let's enjoy the film festival. Thank you. Thank you, Miss Elizabeth. Um, Keywords. Directors have a sense of identity and culture. We have global challenges, and it challenges our perspectives. And I think that is, the, those are the key words that we want to leave with tonight and for the remainder of this week when we are watching these films. It is not easy to just be saying, I'm gonna make a film. But what message are we going to be giving out with that film? How are the creative arts allowing us to send out that message? And so we congratulate all the directors, the producers, who have created these films. And for those who couldn't be here tonight, we have a montage of these directors so that you can meet them and for them to understand and know that we appreciate their work. So Mr. Molina, take it away. Hi, my name is Amanda John and I am a filmmaker from Grenada and recently I had the amazing opportunity to work with an all Grenadian cast and crew on a screenplay which I wrote titled Forget Me Not. Forget Me Not is a short film which spotlights the issues affecting people living with dementia. I was inspired to write the story because I first hand saw how it affected family friends and uh, their, their parents, and just in general how the community um, misunderstood this disease. And I think it's a conversation that we should have about what really it is, how it affects us, how it affects our loved ones, how it affects the caregivers. And so that's sort of the inspiration behind the story. Now, throughout the year, worldwide, there are dementia awareness days and weeks, but the truth is we don't have to wait on a dementia awareness campaign to start talking about it. And so I'm hoping that this film, Forget Me Not, will spark that conversation among us and hopefully we can create some awareness. El Ultimo Chiclero a film by 501 Boys Production and myself, Chef Sean Quillin. So what are the inspirations behind wanting to do such a film? Well, that's very easy, you know. Coming back home as a chef, I've always been interested, intrigued by the lost art traditions, such as stretch me guts, fire hat cooking, all these wonderful culinary delights. Well, you see, we Belizeans, we don't like to document, man. It's rare that you find your granny and your maga one recipe detailed for say, this is how we make the best wangla. Everybody in a Belize have a story, you know. But it's always like this, eh? My grandpa used to do this. My granny used to do that. We does do it like this. You see, before the 2000s, we never even make a cell phone for document with film, multimedia, imagery, voice. So all these stories, like the Chiclero, were only a bedtime story, technically, no? I had a grandfather, and everybody has a grandfather that used to do chiclero. For me, I have two people in my life that are family members that like just bring back nostalgia and memory. I could talk about Charles Woods, everybody know Charlie Woods, Jaguar Hunter, and Jackie Vasquez. Yes, the infamous Jackie Vasquez is my maternal grandfather. That are my ma, pa. My grandpa, Jackie Vasquez, everybody have a story about the children used to run for now. They can hear me a legend. Almost now to today that he passed away, he's like a folklore. Just like Anansi, Bra Tiger, Yorona, you know. But unfortunately, 
I was too young to remember Jackie Vasquez. So I only heard stories about the Jaguar and Charlie Woods used to talk about running a girl and jog and so. So the Chiclero now, with 501's boys' help, I was able to go in the jungle for two weeks with Don Tomas and document the life of a Chiclero. You know, to this day, a lot of them have passed away and we only have memories. Some of them can't walk. These men are alive. And no make no gross fool you. A Chiclero was not only one race of people in this country, you know. Everybody seemed to use the Chicle as a means of income. From the Creole, the Mestizo, the Maya man, all of them, the Chiclero. Now, when I listen to the stories about the hardship going into the jungle for weeks or months upon end, limited ration, your best friend are your machete, your tools, your canvas, your spur on your foot, and you come out with the sapadilla, the sap, to be exported now, you know. We're talking about back in the 60s, 50s, we were exporting this chicle to grand corporations like Wrigley's. Again, I hear people say, in Belize City, we used to go to where Batamdala is now, and we used to have the bales of blocks of sugar to be exported. Imagine that, taking for granted that now we take a stick of gum now and we eat it. But that cannot ever compare to the time when it was real sapadilla. That's synthetic, it has fructose now, words that I can't even pronounce. But Don Tomas showed me, he made it real. I was humbled by a simple stick of chicle and the work that goes into it. This, this hardship, the stories of even murder. That, for me, blew my mind away. So what stood out to me after filming El Ultimo Chiclero? Me and I know everybody, Grandpa, that I'm a Chiclero. It surprised me beyond my wildest expectation to see how a film like this could be inserted into everybody's lives that my grandfather. And you start to think the nostalgia of it all, man. And I'll be honest, while shooting this, we had Don Tomas' brother. We were supposed to interview him, and he lives in Benke. He could not come out of his house because he has arthritis. Because remember, these men live a hard life. All of them are like divers that have the bends. These men, are they can't walk. Arthritis pain in the back. Remember, you're on a tree for majority of your life. So we were supposed to go and interview him. And during the shooting of this film, his brother passed away. I must thank everybody that participated in this film because of stories like this. The reality that it is a lost art. It is a dying part of our history, our culture. But because of technology, I was able to document it and preserve it for all the future picnic we want to hear about that my great grandfather was a chiclero. Thank you, Don Tomas. Thank you, my Belize. El ultimo chiclero. Hi, my name is Cordy Menzies, and I'm the director of From Toledo to Telonia, The Ladies That Lit Up the South. This short documentary highlights the journey of three Maya women who traveled from Toledo, Belize to Telonia, India where they learned to become solar engineers and brought solar-powered electricity to four villages in the south. The reason why this film should be viewed as creatively as possible is because the resilience and bravery of these three women should serve as inspiration for you to take that one step in your life that could change it forever. My name is Yara Lee. I'm the director of Spock in Chernobyl, Exploration After Apocalypse. Uh, when I made this film just a few years ago, not very many people were talking about Chernobyl. The nuclear catastrophe there happened more than three decades ago. So I hope that watching the film in light of the recent uh, events in Ukraine will prompt some valuable conversations. And uh, um, please stay in touch with us. Look forward to your feedback. We're very active on social media and on our website, culturesofresistancefilms.com. We have a uh, historical timelines, resources on the nuclear power deba debate, and uh, viewpoints from experts. So please, uh, with um, these thoughts, I, uh, I'll leave you to experience the documentary. Thank you, and uh, look forward to hearing from you.
Hello and welcome to the 2023 Belize International Film Festival. My name is Art Thomas and I'm an executive producer on the film Kata Kata. This film was written and directed by a good friend of mine by the name of Newton Barabara, Bera, shot on location in Inugu State there in Nigeria. The film tells the story of two brothers who must decide the value of character or risk losing their ultimate reward. So sit back and enjoy the film. Thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to enjoy this screening and have a fantastic time. Hello, 大家好,我是福生漂亮的导演张志坤,非常感谢第十六届国立之国际电影节的评委们选上了这部影片。也希望更多的观众喜欢这部影片多给我们提宝贵的意见谢谢大家 Thank you to all the directors who gave their work for this event Thank you for all those who have been the creative masters of wonderful work so that we can understand the cultures that we live and we understand a, a, di a different view, a world view, um, to make us better people. So this orange economy, the buzzword that we keep listening to, means that we have so much talent of arts, the music, the film industry, but it also means more travel, people coming into our country, and that economy spreads. And so there is definitely a marriage between the film industry and the Belize Tourism Board. And here to be the keynote speaker, we welcome Honorable Anthony Mahler to tell us more about this marriage. Last time that came up, you had to do so. <laughs> uh, thank you, Miss Melissa. Uh, it's truly an honor for me to be here tonight to celebrate the creative economy, to celebrate the work that people do in making whatever film they, they make, whether it's a longer film documentary, uh, ad, an advertisement, all of that, all of those things go into making us a diverse country uh, that we can showcase our talents, we can showcase our culture, uh, and it's truly an honor for me to be here. I, I see Father Jeremy, the only acting I ever did, and you'll be proud of me, was I played Joseph. When I was about seven years old at St. Joseph. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I don't remember. <laughs> uh, but I played Joseph. So, and then the, the other closest thing I did was, uh, and maybe that's why I, I have a Lee phobia about Christmas sometimes. My, my mom used to dress me up every Christmas at St. Joseph like Santa Claus. So those are my two acting experiences. Uh, but good night, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, uh, Doc, uh, you've been doing a wonderful job at the University of Belize. Uh, and uh, Dr. Palacio has worked with us, and, and UB uh, has worked with us in, in updating the Sustainable Tourism Master Plan. We see uh, the University of Belize as the premier institution for tertiary learning and so uh, we always want to partner with you and um, I know Suzette most of my life uh, and this woman that tenacity and what you really need to have in Belize at times to drive something forward and even though it's hard and um, people don't understand it you pushed through and you have um, persevered for, for a long time. So I, kudos to you. Um, I see 
Honorable Mira, thanks for being here, Senator Bennett, my good friend, Ms. Gwen, uh, my friend who the official in Belize now from Atlanta, he, he, I see him all, all the time, um, our friends from Antigua, uh, I, I know your minister uh, well, he provides some guidance, um, he's been in the industry for a long time, and so we always sit together at uh, the meetings for the Caribbean Tourism Organization. So welcome to Belize, the EU rep. Thank you for your support for this initiative. Again, good night, ladies and gentlemen. It's truly my pleasure to join you at this year's Belize International Film Festival. As I understand it, and I think Suzette said it earlier, uh, this is the first one since in person since 2019. So tonight should be a real Belizean celebration, a celebration of the creative minds of those people who continue with their work and dedication to help propel the film industry in Belize forward. We celebrate the writers, the directors, the producers, the actors, and the financiers. You can't forget the people with the money because film costs money, very important and most of the time they're staying at the back room, right? And we celebrate the coordinators of this wonderful event. We also celebrate the moviegoers who watch the films created, whether it is a two-hour movie, a short movie, documentary, an animated film, or anything else, even that grossly overpriced Super Bowl ads. I don't know why they pay $5 million for a 30-second spot, no? Another way it costs, no, third, 5 million US. So we, we could have messed wrong here. I, I got real money for make out there. This world big, I want to tell all of that. For Belize, this festival is a signature event for the film industry, and it creates a space for the convergence of movie lovers, film makers, and dreamers who work tirelessly and in many, in many instances without recognition or reward. This Belize Film Festival has blazed trails over the past 20 years. We've missed a few years of COVID, obviously. And we in the Ministry of Tourism and Diaspora Relations see how important it has become to the growth and development of the orange economy. And based on what we've done with the music festival, mu music and food festival, we have created an orange trust, and we hope that trust continues to grow. And so people who want to make film, who want to do their music videos, who want to be an artist can come and access uh, financing for their work. In fact, the success of this festival was part of the inspiration for the production of the International Music and Food Festival. We strongly believe that we have the talent and creativity here in country to do great things. I want to delve a little bit deeper into the heart and soul of this film festival, what it represents, and why it continues to grow and develop. Film is a powerful medium, a canvas where the human imagination knows no bounds. It is a universal language that transcends borders, cultures, and languages. In the span of a few hours, a well-crafted film can whisk us away to far away lands, immerse us in a diverse perspectives, and connect us with characters whose struggles and triumphs resonate with our own lives. The Belize International Film Festival is a testament to the boundless creative spirit of filmmakers from around the world. It's a celebration of diversity, a stage where stories from every corner of the globe come to life. We are not merely spectators. We are active participants in a global dialogue, engaging with narratives that challenge our world views broaden our horizons, and provoke our deepest emotions. In the heart of Belize, a country with rich natural and cultural heritage and stunning landscapes, 
our local film industry is on a steady path of growth and development. We are proud to showcase Belizean talent alongside international filmmakers, providing unique opportunities to explore our distinct stories and experiences on this stage. But this festival is not merely about watching films. It's about fostering connections and igniting conversations. It's about meeting visionaries behind the camera and the storytellers who breathe life into these narratives. It's about the exchange of ideas and inspiration that flourishes when creative minds from all corners of the world converge in one place. All in all, the Belize International Film Festival is a catalyst for change. And I like that because my tagline for my political run at the last election was change agents. So all of you in here are change agents. <laughs> Through the lens of documentary filmmaking and the power of storytelling, we confront pressing global issues, environmental concerns, so social injustices, and human rights issues. Uh, I don't usually get into politics in you know, these events, but I have to say something. <laughs> I truly believe it's a shame uh, that the world leaders have not done more to fight against the war in Ukraine, in what is happening in the Gaza and other parts of the world. We are all connected and should be living in harmony on this piece of real estate called Earth. Together, as a collective audience, we have the power to incite change, to be moved to action and to lend our voices to those who might otherwise remain unheard. And Belize, as small as our country is in this world, has a very important role to play. But let me bring it back home. I want to emphasize again, because I keep saying it, that filmmaking can only help to boost our economy. It creates meaningful employment for people. This John Briseno administration realizes this and so we are continuously working to enhance the business environment for film production. We want to encourage folks from all across the world to choose Belize to make their films. In fact, the recently, at the recently held investment summit, the Orange Economy, and specifically the film industry, was featured as a, having great potential for our country. And my ministry stands ready to assist in making this a reality. We will continue to lobby for better incentives. For example, it is necessary to reduce the time it takes to process work visas for people to work in industry. This is just one example of what, we can, what can be done to improve the ease of doing business in Belize. If you want to study a success story, just look at Atlanta. All the hype was in Hollywood now. Atlanta is doing well in filmmaking because they've created the in incentives and the programs for them to attract more and more films, to attract music videos. I must say that over the past two years, Belize has seen an increase in the number of films being made in this beautiful country of ours. So I thank each and every person that has contributed to these successes. And I'll just list a few of the, the how do you say, para, paradise? Paradise. In 2021, the first Paradise movie that just recently launched on BET Plus was filmed in San Pedro. In 2022, we saw Hallmark produce Caribbean Summer in Placencia. And from the feedback that I get, things been good in a Placencia while I'm moving me to make. Everybody make a decent money. So the, the peninsula was bustling. Uh, then the second parodies movie returned to San Pedro. Meanwhile, the Amazing Race Australia film, not just one, but three episodes for their participants racing across the country of Belize, showcasing along the way Punta Gorda, San Ignacio, Belize City, and Kikaka. 
And in 2023, Michael Douglas did a movie here in Belize to showcase the fly fishing industry. And I understand that they just finished filming the third parodies in some movie in San Pedro. So we have a lot to celebrate and a lot to look forward to. I encourage you to fully immerse yourselves in the films, embrace the connections, and allow the Belize International Film Festival to be a catalyst for personal and societal transformation. Let this festival be a testament to the power of cinema, the universal language that unites us all. Enjoy the events and congratulations again to you and all the people who have made this possible, Suzette. I know you've put in immense work in making this happen, you and your team. So kudos to you and we look forward to supporting you for many more to come. So thank you again. I guess my job was to declare it open. So we're, we're open. Thank you, Minister. Um, if you were campaigning just now, but I know you weren't, but if you were, you have my vote. Uh, <laughs> he missed that completely. <laughs> you miss it completely. We'll talk afterwards. Ladies and gentlemen, the minister opened, opened it. And so we invite you to sit back, relax, enjoy our films. We are hosting for you tonight. Um, it was a pleasure hosting you. My name is Melissa, and I want to just, sorry, Miss Suzette, big up to all the cast from John John's Blue. Yes, wonderful play. Hope you didn't miss it. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoy.